Hey everyone, small announcement before the video. So as you know, we have an updated user interface and this was made like literally one day before that update. So I decided not to redo it. Uh, just go ahead and follow along. The process is still the same. The icons are slightly different. I think you guys are okay. So here we go. Hey everyone, welcome back to JLake 3D. So today we have a fun project. It's a fender flare for a truck. And uh, as you can see here, I drew up a an example uh, truck bed that we're gonna use as our reference here. So this is a totally different subject, but uh, we're gonna work on the fender flare today. So what we start out by doing is obviously by offsetting the edge, but however, offsetting the edge in this case sometimes may result in a spline. So sometimes we do not want that because remember in, in my uh, pattern tool tutorial, I told you guys, you can't use splines as a reference, for example, for the circular pattern. So what we need to do is start from scratch with a sketch. So we go to sketch mode and we choose circle or if you want to just sketch a circle and we try to match that edge uh, so we can kind of use it as a reference. And then we're going to draw a couple more edges of where we want kind of to work with. And we want to offset this by let's say four inches and then a couple down there so that we can have as many reference points as we can. And I like to sketch the straight lines from the center instead of from edge to edge, just because sometimes it might be off just a little tiny bit and you won't notice until later and then you have to do a lot of work. But anyways, let's extrude that out. And we could replace the face here, except that uh, first of all, the sketch is in the way, but second of all, we have multiple faces here. So if we replace the face, as I'm gonna show you here, uh, it's going to only choose one of the faces and we're going to have basically empty spots over here. So that won't work. And what one method for other projects would be if you split the body, for example, using a reference point, it might work for some of your projects, but for this one, it's just not what we need. So in this case, it's even simpler. Actually, what we do is simply extrude the piece that we have and then we subtract it from the body we're working on. And that, that depends also on the type of model you have. Because if you have an STL, this would be not be as possible because it would turn your uh, shaper file into an STL and that's not what we want. So that's why if you can try to get a step format because STLs are much harder to work with, but they're good for references. But anyways, let's go ahead and continue off. We're going to soften those edges with a quick chamfer. And now we can go and chamfer the main thing to make it look like our fender flare that we like. So this is basically progressing really quick at this point, but now we just need the holes for the screws, right? Uh, and uh, we can simply do that by sketching on that sketch plane in the place we want. And we can also use another reference point if we offset the edge, but in this case, I think I got it pretty close to the center. So we're gonna make that hole like this. And one method, I already used this in the pattern tutorial. Uh, we can either uh, continue this over and uh, let's say make uh, make sure it's 160 by because it's not a complete circle, but we can make this uh, a lot of patterns so that we can do a lot of manual work. Or I'm gonna show you again, just because this is important, I'm gonna show you again how to save yourself a lot of time. So let's say we have 10 pieces here and uh, we want to make holes in our object just for this, right? So what we can do is select all of them and then extrude them through as a new body because we wanna subtract that from the fender flare to make room for those bolts. Um, and then once we go to subtract it, make sure you select new body when you're doing this, by the way. But uh, once we go, we have to choose every single one of them. So for example, we choose our main body, we wanna subtract from, and then we have to select all of those, keep going off the list to do it. Or if we go back and undo that, we can simply do one and then continue that through all of them. And this will save you a lot of time. And again, this kind of implies that you know what you're doing, you planned ahead on your project, but it will save you time on those projects that you do that. So for example, we go ahead and copy it over and uh, make sure you have enough of those pieces. And now we can simply go and subtract and use the pattern folder. And it saves us a lot of time, a lot of clicking. Let's say you have a hundred of these, it will save a bunch of time. So now that we have that, we basically have a finished fender flare. Uh, there are some more steps that I will go through just in case though. So I've told you many times to save fillets for later, but in this case, well, we know what we're working on. So let's go ahead and make those now and make sure you do the most important pieces first and then the other pieces later. And also if, if you want to save some time again in the future, 
let's say you know how usually you do one fillet at a time to make sure the edge is correct. If you know that you want to fillet everything, you can save yourself a lot of time. For example, instead of clicking all those circles and filleting them individually, you can, for example, undo just to show you. And you can select the face and then click the fillet chamfer kind of tool and you can do that. So uh, you also have to realize that it doesn't work for every situation. For example, if you want that specific number, it might conflict if edges are you know connected. So we might have to unclick certain edges to make sure that it works the way we want it to. And then after we have those done, uh, then we can continue on. But just it, this either way, it saves a lot of time in many projects. For example, instead of clicking all those circles, you know, because it's you have to like swipe around and do that. But and now uh, you could just simply click that edge and get it over with. But it might have to be smaller, like I said, because of the conflicting edges. But now that we have our piece, we can move on. And let's say if we want to um, shell this thing, you know, uh, first of all, we probably have to uh, hide the object because this is in the way. Like if you have a lot of objects, you might have to work around them, but it's easier just to hide everything. You could also also use the isolate tool. That will make it easier. But let's go ahead and shell this uh, by selecting all the faces that we want emptied out. And make sure you get all of them. Otherwise, you will have an error. So even those little ones that are kind of hiding away. And then we can simply use the arrow or enter a number. So in this case, I'm not really sure how much I want. I'm going to use the arrow just to see. And I think about a quarter inch should be fine for thickness uh, for this plastic. Uh, however, sometimes you might want it reinforced. So I will go through and show you how to reinforce it with, let's say, like a uh, supporting material. So we already have a lot of sketches in, uh, in our folder that we can use as a reference. But let's go ahead and make one more exactly in the center, at least as close as possible to where we want it. Um, like, you know, if, if you have like a computer box, you have like the little uh, plus support bar. This is something similar to that. But that way these things won't break when you're, you know, flexing them or whatever. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and after we have that uh, circle, we just draw a shape. And we have to revolve it 90 degrees, right? But we have that stuff in the way. So what we need to do is go into our folder and choose section view so that we can actually see what we're working on. So let's go ahead and go out of there. And uh, simply by selecting the plane that you're working on should work. And then we select the square that we want and make sure you don't select anything extra that you don't need or you want rotated. And some lines are okay if you're not going to use them again. But we go ahead and rotate that by 90 degrees because we're going to use that as a reference to go ahead and kind of sweep our shape across. And we can use the revolve tool, sweep tool. You know, there's multiple ways of doing this. It depends on what project. And also make sure you select all of the pieces that you want. So rotate out and select even the little edge right there that you want just in case because we're, we're using a square so we, it's going to be easier to replace your face because round edges are harder to do with. And this one's really easy to edit. But as you can see, we have that extra piece down there. And we can simply erase that by drawing a simple sketch. Uh, like, for example, a circle. I always use a circle to cut stuff away. And then you adjust the edge after that. So you draw a circle. You move it out of the way. So we can kind of get it off there. Because we, we don't want to click everything at once. We can just, you know, uh, save us a lot of work if we simply move that circle out of the way. By using the move tool. And then extrude it out. To subtract so now we just delete it we don't need it and now we can replace the face of these to match the existing face over there and i know it shows you still a triangle but there's an easy simple solution you guys should watch my uh replace face tutorial there's a lot of explanation about this and it's really old but it's still relevant to this day so what we can do now is um, chamfer those edges over there and make sure you chamfer them not fill, fill it them unless you have a round edge Otherwise, it's just going to be harder to work with. So now we replace the face to match it this way. And we can do the same thing on the other side. So now once we have that, we need to also do the same thing to the back side. As you can see, our edge is slightly over there. And sometimes replace face uh, will do the trick, for example. But in this case, if you remember, we have multiple bodies multiple different shapes on that plane that we want to work with, right? Let's say each truck is different. You might have a base shape, but you need to match the face of the truck body so that you can put your part on. So what we need to do in this case, instead of replacing the face, which is not working here, we need to actually subtract that from the body. So we need to extend it out 
and then use the same thing we did in the beginning uh, by uh, putting it on the body. So we go in there, we extrude the face, and then we unhide the bodies that we didn't hide before, uh, not the tire, but the truck bed. And we simply subtract from this. And then we delete the things we don't need. Just those little edges over there. And we basically have the same shape there. And then let's hide it again so that we can continue working on our part. Um, so as you can see now, it matches the face on all of these pieces. And now we subtract this little edge from the part itself and we can delete the parts inside. And you don't have to double click on everything. You can just simply select one of the faces or one of the edges, and then you go to the menu and you select. And it's just, I find this way easier than having to double click. Cause sometimes you might double click on something that you don't want to click. And it's just, you have to redo a lot of clicking. So this way I find it way easier to do. Then you delete those and then you can select everything by uh, holding it down and swiping down. And then we just union it together as one piece. All right, so moving on, I, I know for some, some things, this would be the final part. You could just stop working right here. You got your part, you can go ahead and manufacture this, but let's go ahead and continue making one more thing uh, because I do want to have like a, a spacer there for the bolt uh, instead of an empty space. And uh, since we didn't do it in the beginning, because I forgot, we can uh, add it in now. And uh, again, we're gonna kind of follow through and just extrude it and uh, subtract our piece and shell it to get like a really thin layer. And I'm gonna show you how to do it now. So let's go ahead into the sketch menu again. And then we're gonna extrude the piece and make a new body and then hide the sketches so we can extrude that out slightly more just because we wanna match it at a certain level. And now we subtract just like we did the other two times because we don't need those extra pieces in the back, but uh, we also want to match the face because the replaced face won't work, as you know. So now we need to shell it because we want the exact dimension, let's say 0.1, or maybe we can do a little bit more if necessary, but uh, for this case, it might be fine. And we could just simply move it out so we can see, because as you can see, the color kind of stayed the same there. So I moved it just to verify that it did actually do what I wanted. So we move it back and then we go from the inside and we extrude it out so to delete those edges that we don't need. So it looks like it's one body with an edge there at this point, but it is that 0.1 millimeter that we want. So if we go to change the color, uh, we, we will be able to see it. So visualize and then uh, change the same color to the body. And basically we can connect these two or we can subtract it to, to make sure that we only have these circles, right? Because we have the shelled body in the back. So it depends on the project that you're working on. But uh, in this case, I'm just gonna do it for, for the visual. I'm gonna add the circle there. And these uh, holes will basically be used as a washer for the bolt, you know, to hold it in place. And uh, we're gonna use the same exact method for the patterns that we have been using for the last couple of videos is by making one and copying it over. So make sure it's a new body and copy it over to the other ones instead of doing one at a time, right? And uh, once we have those over, we can simply subtract the pattern folder uh, that makes our job way easier. Okay, now as you can see, we have that body there and we can subtract from the body and we simply hide those or delete them, whatever you need. And this is essentially a done project, except that it's kind of hollow. So you have to keep that in mind. If you want everything to be shelled out and exact that you have to kind of go through a couple more steps to make sure that you have only those washer style things left but this is basically it i mean look it matches the truck body really well so it's obviously really nice to have a reference uh if you can get a 3d scan and make it into instead of a mesh like an, a step file instead that really helps because a mesh would be a lot harder to work with so hope this helps hope you guys enjoy the tutorial if you have any questions leave them leave them below in the comments and i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye here at JLake 3D, our goal is to inspire and empower you to create your own amazing projects. Please support our work so that we can keep doing it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to see more.